You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is Newton's Third Law of Motion, and there's two questions we wish to answer. In what way does the third law of motion describe the nature of a force, and how can we use both the second law and the third law to describe the magnitude of the force and of the acceleration of two interacting objects? Let's get started. Newton's Third Law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. But it's not enough to know what Newton's third law states. You have to know what Newton's third law means. And what th Newton's third law means is that forces are the result of interactions between objects, that they act upon both of the interacting objects mutually and simultaneously, that is, at the same time. We sometimes say that, that forces come in pairs. You spelled it wrong. Pairs. P-A-I-R-S. Pairs. That forces come in Better. pairs. That is to say that there's two forces always acting among the interacting objects, that they act equally and in opposite directions. That's what we mean by Newton's third law of motion. Newton's third law describes the nature of a force. A force is a push or pull between two objects that results whenever those two objects press or push on each other. The idea is that forces are in no way mysterious. They result when objects contact each other. It's the idea that's very logical that if you touch another object, that other object has to touch you back. We call these forces between interacting objects interaction force pairs. Here's what I mean. Consider a person standing on the floor. As that person stands on the floor, there's contact between the feet of the person and the floor. And that contact results in an interaction force pair. We would describe it like this. The person pushes down on the floor, and the floor pushes up on the person. These two forces act on different objects in opposite directions and are of equal strength. That's Newton's third law. You know, it's often the case in physics that the things that we think we know interfere with the things that we don't know. And that may be the case when it comes to the third law of motion, because we often call this the law of action-reaction. And it gives you the idea that there's some sort of action taking place, and then the reaction force is the result or consequence of that action. But that's not what the third law means. It's not like I push on a book, and the result of that is the book's arm pushes back on me. That's not how it works. The idea is that when two objects contact each other, there's this contact interaction that results in a pair of forces that act simultaneously on each of the objects. It really isn't like the idea of action than reaction. It would be better if we called this the law of interaction force pairs. That would be the better way to think of it. So Newton's third law suggests that forces result from interactions between objects. Let's look at a couple of examples. Let's consider here a book that's at rest on the table. The book touches the table, and since you can't touch without being touched, the table touches the book. That's an interaction that results in a pair of forces. Here's how we would describe that interaction force pair. The book pushes down on the table, and the table pushes up on the book. Let's look at a second example. Here we consider a bucket being whirled in a circle using a rope. The rope touches the bucket, and since you can't touch without being touched, the bucket touches the rope. And so here's how we would describe that interaction force pair. The bucket pulls leftward and downward up on the rope, and the rope pulls upward and rightward up on the bucket. This is what Newton's third law suggests, that forces result from interactions, and that interaction results in a pair of forces. So Newton's third law describes these individual forces in the interactive force pairs as being equal and opposite. Here's what we mean. Force is a vector. That is, it has a magnitude, a numerical value, and it has a direction. And what Newton's third law does is it describes both the magnitude and the direction of these two individual forces. As for the magnitude, it describes it as being equal on both of the objects. And as for the direction, they will be in the opposite direction on the two objects. Here's an example. Let's suppose a ball is moving to the right and it contacts a catcher mitt, as shown. Upon contact, there's an interaction force pair. The ball's moving to the right, and so the mitt pushes to the left on the ball, and the ball pushes to the right on the mitt. 
If the force on the ball is 30 newtons, then the force on the mitt is 30 newtons, equal magnitude forces. And these forces are in opposite direction. So the force on the ball would be to the left, the force on the mitt would be to the right. That's what we mean by equal and opposite. Now here's a classic question known as the bug in the bus question. A very massive bus is moving at highway speeds and collides with an unsuspecting little bug. The question is, upon which object, the bus or the bug, is the force the greatest? Your options are the force is bigger on the bug, the force is bigger on the bus, or the bug and the bus experience the same amount of force. So why don't you pause the video, give it some thought, and we'll discuss the answer. The answer is C. According to Newton's third law, the forces are of equal magnitude on both of the interacting forces. Now people have difficulties with this, and I believe that the difficulty is that they confuse the force with the effect of the force. So Newton's third law states that the forces are equal, but Newton's second law states that the acceleration that's caused by the force depends both upon the force and upon the mass. So forces, when on balance, have the effect of causing an acceleration, and that acceleration depends all on more than just the force. It depends upon the mass. So if we apply that to this situation, we'd have to say that the force on the bug equals the force on the bus, just the opposite direction, but the mass of the bug is much, much less than the mass of the bus. And since accelerations depend inversely upon mass, we'd have to say the acceleration is much greater for the least massive object. The acceleration of the bug is much, much, much greater than the acceleration of the bus. So while the forces on the individual objects are of equal magnitude, according to Newton's second law, the accelerations depend upon mass and are not necessarily equal on both of the objects. Here's another classic question. A rifle recoils when it's fired. You see, the rifle pushes the bullet forward down the barrel of the rifle, and the bullet pushes the rifle backwards. This is an interaction force pair. The question again is, which object, the rifle or the bullet, experiences the greatest force? And your choices are the force on the rifle is greatest, the force on the the force on the bullet is greatest, or the rifle on the bullet experience the same amount of force. So why don't you pause this video, give it some thought, and when you're ready, press play. Let's talk about the answer. So the answer once more is C. The force on the bullet is equal in magnitude to the force on the rifle. Now before you again, you start doing that, how can that be? Make sure you're not confusing the effect of the force with the force itself. The forces are equal but the accelerations, the effect of the force, depend upon mass and inversely upon mass. So the bullet having the much lesser mass would have the much greater acceleration, making the rifle side of this interaction the safer place to be. Here's some take home truths. First of all, what we learn is that Forces result from interactions between objects number one and object number two. There's a force on each of these objects. You might say that forces come in pairs. And the force on object one is of equal magnitude and in the opposite direction as the force upon object two. And even though the forces are equal, the accelerations that result from these forces are not necessarily equal. They will always be greatest on the object that has the least mass. So at this time in every video, I'd like to give you an action plan, a, a sort of series of next steps that will help you solidify your learning. But before I do, could I ask you to help us out? First of all, if you like the video, could you press the like button down below and maybe even subscribe to the channel. And once you subscribe, click on the bell and get notifications when new videos come out. If you have any questions or comment, leave them in the area down below. Now for the action plan. First of all, on our website, there's a section called Concept Builders. And in the Concept Builder section, why don't you try the Newton's Third Law Concept Builder? It's a great way to solidify your learning. Second, we have a series of Minds on Physics app. And app number two has three different modules on them. And the first one is called Newton's Law of Motion. If you open up, if you download that app to your phone or tablet and then open up uh, the Newton's Law module, you're looking for Mission in L12 perfect follow-up to this little act this little video and finally we have a tutorial on our website and it's a reliable and quick way to sort of freshen up on what you've learned in this video whatever you do i wish you the best of luck with newton's third law of motion